Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dr. Glenn Vo, and I have my friend here, Jay Malik. I call him the dental tax strategist. Jay, how are you doing today? I am wonderful. Thank you very much. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great. So, you know, guys, I met Jay. Uh, I was in I've been I was in another mastermind and I met him there and he was one of the speakers there. Just blew the whole crowd away with all his knowledge there. And the funny thing is, I told Jay that he reminds me of my organic chemistry instructor. When I was in when I was in uh, college, I had this organic chemistry set. No nonsense, straight up. And I told Jay, Jay, uh, it's a compliment, man, but you remind me of my organic chemistry instructor. And so I just recently reconnected with Jay over the weekend. We're at another mastermind and man, he was dropping so much knowledge. And then I noticed in the Nifty Thrifty Facebook group, there was a doctor that had all these questions. And I was like, well, who wants to talk to a dental tax strategist? Everyone kept on me, 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 me. So guys, here he is. He is actually, Jay, you said you're an EA, right? Yes. Let's start off with that because when you told me EA, I'm like, what? What does that mean? Explain to everybody in the group, first of all, what's the difference between an EA and a CPA and, and how is that advantageous? Let's start with that. Yeah. Well, there are three types of people who are allowed to represent taxpayers before IRS. Uh, everybody knows about CPAs. Mm -hmm. Then attorneys, if you have a law license from your state, you can represent taxpayers before IRS. And the third category is the EAs. This stands for enrolled agent. Okay. Yeah. Actually, EA is the only uh, tax uh, person mm -hmm. who is uh, an expert in taxes and they are uh, given their, their, their it's a process, IRS you know, takes an exam and all that, and then permits them to represent people before them, uh, all cut all type of uh, uh, representation before the IRS. So and, uh, it, it sounds like you just said that the I IRS like certifies you. Is that, uh, that's what it sounded yes, like. Yes, Department of Treasury issues a, uh, us this, this credential, yes. Well, and, and, you know, they don't just kind of hand out, out to anybody, right? Yeah, you have to pass a three-part exam and then you have to qualify through other and then you have to keep the license by taking like you guys continuing education courses and uh, then every three years you have to you know apply again and then they uh, revise the credential. Wow. Wow. So so basically so CPA uh, is really just licensed in their one state, but the EA pretty much can, pr can practice anywhere in the U.S. Yes, yes. So I so have, that, you can work with anybody. So if there's a doctor that's uh, like, you know, on the West Coast right now watching, you can work with them. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have, I have a dentist on both coasts and in between whom I work with. I've been doing it for years. But so, Jay, let's start with this. Um, how did you, I actually already know, but let everyone else know. Why did you decide to work with Dennis out of all people? Yeah. Well, uh, years ago, I used to have a general practice, then I specialized into medical professionals. So I had MD clients, I had some chiropractor clients and some dentist clients. Most of them were MDs. And then there were some, uh, in, among MDs, I had, you know, surgeons and you know physicians yeah. and all that it turned out that surgeons had uh, a lot of guard complex i didn't like that <laughs> so i started to drop them so you didn't well, like the dentist complex. because most dentists don't have that problem so i said well, i'm going to work with dentists except <laughs> oral surgeons oh so oral surgeons <laughs> okay for the <laughs> hey that's just a joke guys or ms guys but yeah so that so then you decided to work with dentists because you know naturally they have their own businesses and you you found it's easier to to to, to get those tax benefits because they have their own businesses as opposed to uh physicians or surgeons who work for like a hospital right yes okay so jay let's let's jump right into it okay what what is the one of the let's start with one of the common mistakes let's talk about the common mistakes dentists make when you look and you look at their tax returns or you onboard a new dental client, what are some of those mistakes that you see that dentists do? Well, the, well, first of all, let me say that 
when I look at tax returns for dentists who send send them over to me for analysis, I keep pretty good statistics. Almost ninety five percent of them overpay their tax. Overpay. Yeah, which means that's not more, Yep, they pay more tax than they they were legally required to. Ninety five percent of them. Okay. Now th th there's a wide range. Some pay a little bit more. Some pay a lot more. But uh, Almost ninety-five percent have overpaid. So where, how are they overpaying? I'm well, very they, are, they are not. Uh, uh, one major thing is that which I, they are not practicing in the right ent type of entity. Okay. Okay. So that is one major thing. Um, the other is that uh, many times they, you see, in as opposed to you guys who work in a small area like human mouth and it's very minute and there is so many millions of things that can go wrong in there. In the in case of, in our case, the accountant types, we work in only two type of, basically two type of things. One is the income, one is the expenses. Right, income so and expenses. We work with income and expenses. So what they're doing is they are uh, either not running their income properly or they are not characterizing their expenses properly. One of the two things. Okay. And that results in them overpaying the taxes. Oh, well. Wow. Okay, so we have a question here. And I, I want to keep on going to that. But as the questions come in, I want to bring them in there. So we have a question here. How do you know what entity is the correct one, LLC or S-Corp? Okay. Um, well... Actually, LLC can be S Corp and LLC can file. LLC is the structure which is created in the state. And then it has the choice. It can choose to be taxed as an S Corp or a C Corp or a partnership, depending on. Or it can be totally disregarded and it can be a sole proprietorship. Okay. So, so, so what are the advantages as far as choosing which one? Well, every type of entity has its own advantages and it depends on the financial situation of the doctor. Okay. Uh, and generally, generally S-Corp is helpful for dentists. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but, the, uh, but that is not always the case. Another thing is sometimes you need more than one entity to run the practice. It's more advantageous if you run your income through more than one entities. So let's talk about that because when we were at the mastermind, uh, Josh Cochran, if you're watching, shout out to you, man. That was an awesome presentation you did at our mastermind. Uh, you know, he was a big fan of like multiple entities running different parts of your practice. So let's talk about that. So why is it advantageous to run things through multiple entities for your own, for one practice? Let's talk about that, what you just said there. Yes. Well, Josh, Josh uh, recommends it for a particular purpose um, and he recommends a particular system, uh, which can work very effectively, by the way. Um, uh, and it, uh, it's a good idea to talk to Josh about it and ask about his system. It works very well. So the with, with on the tax side of it, you say if you have a C corporation mm -hmm. in the mix, it is treated differently than an S corporation for tax purposes. Okay. Similarly, you, you might have some advantages of having a partnership. Okay. So again, it depends on your financial situation and your ultimate goals. Uh, but because these entities are treated differently, they file different forms uh, for their income and expenses. They, they have their own advantages. Uh, and if you can, if you can, you can actually stack them up very well to take advantage of different types of, uh, you know, uh, uh, benefits which they provide. So, so let's talk about like I know, so, uh, you know, some some offices they use like a like a management entity. They have a management entity that they that they pay from or they 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 manage the practice, and then they have another entity for their practice let's say they own the building there's another entity there so let's say like multiple entities like that like a like a management entity like a building i don't know the building entity some people even talked about having if they had multiple practices having an entity for the lab too um why why is that advantageous to run it through there so let's say a solo practitioner who has like a management entity um how is that advantageous as as uh you know tax tax reasons Tax purposes. 
Okay. Well, text-wise, there is, for example, if you have a C corp, I'll give you an example. Now, a C corp, uh, I mean, you, it is taxed at 21% now under the new law, right? So you pay 21% tax, and if you are a higher income, which many most dentists are on the higher income, you might be paying, what, 25 30%, 30, 33% tax in the tax bracket. So you can see the difference there that that entity you are paying less in tax okay because the rate is is lower um in the previous tax law there used to be uh certain disadvantages to running a professional practice uh professional services practice like a dental practice through a c corp uh now it is not so that is one advantage then there are certain uh, fringe benefits which can be run through uh, a, a C corp, which cannot be run through an an, uh, an S corp, if you are more than two percent shareholder in the S corp. So, and and certain in certain other instances, it is better to have a uh, you know a partnership in, in in the in the mix as well, uh, and use that as well. Okay, so uh, let's go back to uh, you know that first question I asked you is uh, what are the the most common mistakes? And and you said you started you started right off the bat. You said uh, we we pay too much taxes, right? How else? How can we prevent ourselves from paying too much taxes? What are those mistakes you see with these other dentists? Okay, well, <clears throat> the, everybody has their own. Um, weaknesses when it comes to filing the tax return mm -hmm. and i what i've also seen is that no two doctors are alike everybody's situation is different okay for example i mean one doctor might be their parents might have paid for their education so they don't have any debt while another guy might have these days doctors are coming out with half a million dollars in that Mm -hmm. right? So they're two different people in two different situations. So what strategies work for one will not work for this, the other one. Okay. Um, similarly, one might be married and the, or one might be single. One might have children. One will only have pets and, you know, all that stuff. Okay. So every person is different. And to tell you the truth, the beauty of this, the real benefit of the tax planning part comes in if you take into consideration your own particular situation and mm -hmm. create a plan according to that. Then it also comes into play. It, the, for example, the future plans also come into play. You know, what do you want to do with money? What do you want? How you want to grow wealth and all that? Let's pick out a new practice owner has uh, just opened a practice, has a big practice loan, and also has student debt. Um, let's see, most likely this person is probably married, maybe one kid. So let's, 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 do, let's work through the strategy of this hypothetical Dr. Jones, okay? What would be some of the things that Dr. Jones needs to be uh, careful with? New practice, has a new loan with a new practice, um, he has debt, He's married, has one kid. Let's work through Dr. Jones here. Okay. So how many wives does Dr. Jones have? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Well, we're, 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 sticking, we're, sticking, uh, we're sticking in the States here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> you see, the thing is, uh, first thing is how much income does he, how big is the practice? Okay. Uh, how much he collects? Not only how much he collects, how much he brings home. Um, collecting is one thing, bringing home is another thing, as you sure, know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so all, all, all these questions, you know, uh, come into play. Uh, what, how much net he'll be taking home? Uh, uh, and, uh, and because the, the tax is paid on the net income, right? It doesn't, mm -hmm. on what, whatever he collects. Uh, one thing I can tell you is that, um, uh, for example, that whatever Dr. Jones, uh, uh, does uh, he should always be aware to run more money, more expenditure? The most expenditure he can run through the practice, he the more beneficial it is for him because he is be paying for the expenses. What what are called the pre-tax dollars, mm -hmm. other than post-tax dollars, which is his own money. Yeah. 
So he has to be aware that he spends uh, the most he can he should spend through. So, so I'm glad you brought that up because that is a hot topic in here. What can I run through my business without getting audited and getting in trouble? Okay, mm -hmm. so let's talk about business expenses here. What are some of the business expenses that you see Dennis try to pull off with you and you say, hey, come on, man, you can't do that. What are some of those things? And what are some of those things that you can do and people didn't know that? Let's do that. Let's start with what, let's start with what you can do. There, we, we like it when you say yes to stuff, CPAs and EA. We like it when you guys say yes. So what are some of the things that we can run through our business without getting in trouble? Well, the internal revenue code, which basically uh, this decides what what how the what is taxed and how it is taxed, it has a section one sixty two, uh, which says that uh, all the legitimate business expenses, regular and normal business expenses, are deductible. Okay, um, so when they passed the uh, Affordable Care Act, is um, they um, there was a provision in there that they codified that uh, there got to be a business reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I, we have a, um, you know, I'm going to entertain this guy's question because I think it's kind of funny. Um, okay, he wants to rent a hot air balloon for his practice for marketing purposes. Can Is that a business expense? Hot air balloon. Yes, he, if he uses it to promote his practice, his practice's name is on there. He can run the hot air balloon around his practice and in that area. But it has to have the practice name on it. It can't be just a random hot air balloon. No, but how will he promote the practice from there? Uh, maybe it's, if he has a sign, maybe? Yeah, that... you can if you, people can read that, yeah. If maybe, it's... what if he decides to, maybe he's doing this promotion and his wife ends up is happens to be there too, and they just hold the sign up for a second, and then they just take the balloon around the city. Would that still be uh, no. That will not work. It uh -oh. needs to be. Uh, you see, it needs to be the primary purpose of the balloon should be promoting the practice. Oh, okay. So he has to have the well, sign up the whole time. I'm sorry. He has to have the sign up the whole time. Yeah, well, not holding the sign like that. I mean, it has to be visible and it has oh, to be okay. signed, it has to be on the balloon. and what, Or he can buy a balloon. Practice, he can actually buy a balloon. I don't know how much balloons cost and run it regularly. I mean, and <laughs> do, do. there you go, buddy. I hope you like that, uh, that, that answer there. So actually, I have some questions. I want to do some rapid fire here. So uh, a, a big topic that came up while during the mastermind, we were saying, okay, well, we want to go to... I don't know, Las Vegas, and there's a CE course there, and we want to run it through the business. How many hours of CE do you actually have to attend to to for it to count as a business expense? Well, the the law says that if you uh, <clears throat> if you spend four hours a day on business in a different city, so that day you can then deduct. All the expenses of that you can deduct for that day. So it's got to be four hours. Four hours you have to spend on that business. Now, it doesn't have to be necessarily CE. It can be anything related to business. For example, if a dentist has to go and look at a, I know these young dentists, they like this new equipment a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. buy it and it's expensive and all that. So if they want to go to some other city and look at some or explore to buy a piece of equipment, if they spend four days on that, that four hours a, a day on that, so that day they can, that day, what they were the traveling expenses, that day's expenses, staying in the hotel, food and all that, they can deduct. Oh, okay, okay, so it's four hours there to, dedicated to the business. It doesn't have to be necessarily be C, but it has to be something for, so if you're going and you're looking at some equipment that can count as well. What about, uh, you know, if, uh, so Dr. Vin Nguyen is my podcast partner, uh, and, and we like to go to Las Vegas a lot. And, and what if we went to Las Vegas, but we we're going for research purposes. Um, we were just very curious about how the uh, oral habits of casino workers are. We we're just going there doing some research. Would that work for us? Well, you can do that. We can you can do the research if it helps the business. How will it help the business? Oh, you know, just <laughs> do some. We just want to know how their teeth. Would that work? You know, because, yeah. you know, we actually have to be at the blackjack table to see their teeth and everything yeah. with that. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, it depends how if you can make it somehow relate to the business. For example, if the casino workers are the patients you market to. Right. 
then uh, and you, uh, you you can of course uh, uh, i once met at a casino a chiropractor whose clients all came from the casinos wow okay. actually just to, to, to full disclosure jay uh, i live about uh, my practice is about 45 actually about 45 minutes away from a casino so okay. literally actually do have patients for, who are from the casino. Okay, so we have a question here, and it's another S Corp question. Would you recommend that all owner dentists have an S Corp related to their business? For most dentists, it is, I would say it is true. For most dentists. Okay. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and get generally and... that is helpful to have have, have an S Corp generally, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go back because we're having some fun with what what counts as a deduct uh, a business expense and what does not. Um, what are some of the other things that we can talk about? I think another popular thing is is uh, your car and also uh, you know, like mileage. So how does that work? And and is that something that dentists can can use into their benefit? Yeah. Generally, I have found mm, that the best way to deduct the car for business use is if the practice owns the car. Yeah, the practice owns the car. Yeah, so practice owns the car, practice pays for it, practice pays for all its expenses, so it is used for business. And of course, as any other vehicle which is used for business, you are required to keep a log, which is pretty simple, nothing to, nothing fancy, but some, it has to be kept. And at the end of the year, the doctor can you know be paid on W-2, for the that amount that percentage of the usage which he used for personal use and rest of it is, is for business and uh, that i have found in most cases most cases that is the most efficient uh, tax uh, way to deduct a vehicle now um and and let's say using it for your personal uh reasons that using that company vehicle i mean do they, you have to keep a log for that as well or how do you how do you legally and not get in trouble using it yes you are you are required to keep contemporaneous record which means that it can be anything for example in my case i keep a uh, small notebook in my glove compartment every time i sit in the car i brought the right there from going from here to here so many miles and then i write there what was the purpose of it right so this is how i keep my log and that's all that is needed. You need, you need it, it needs to show you the date, needs to show from where to where you went, how many miles you went, and what was the purpose of it. That's all you need you know, on it. And you can keep it continuously. And uh, then at the end of the year, actually what I do is at the end of the year, I just close mine, put it, save it. And so in case I am audited, I'll have it ready to show it to the auditor. Okay, so we have another question from an audience member here. Uh, what about using your kids' pictures on your website for marketing purposes can they get paid for that yes they can be they can be paid that is one of the ways kids can be paid a reasonable fee for example say if we have to pay say two thousand dollars to a child uh, to get a model child to to be in our pictures right and that is a going rate for that yeah we can pay our child two thousand dollars because that's a going rate if we can prove that then it, it doesn't shouldn't our we, we should not you know we can't we, there is no need to discriminate against your own children wow. Just okay. to a well, that, that was a pretty that was a pretty hot topic earlier so i'm glad you answered that that comes that's from the uh tax professional himself there okay so we got a another question here what is reasonable income for a dentist to claim as w-2 income reasonable income for a dentist to claim as w-2 income i i think if i understand the question right they're asking for an s corporation what is the reasonable uh, income i think that's what they're asking probably okay. let's go with that let's yeah. go with that and if they they want it the different way they can ask another question yes. so let's go with that Yes. So the, the, the there is no no definition of reasonable. No, we, it has not been provided in the tax code or by the IRS. There is no. It it has to be reasonable. When you have an S corporation, the dentist owner should be paid a reasonable salary. 
Okay. So what I do is normally in my practice, we figure out what an average dentist is being paid in that area to work that kind. And that is the W2 income for the dentist. And we only pay that much as W2 income and the remaining they take out as distributions from the S corporation. Okay, perfect. And then uh, we're gonna go back to, and then we're gonna go back to the car question here. This doctor asks, uh, you know, as far as keeping the log, uh, she wants to know: uh, Does that mean like just keeping a log, like driving to the office every day? Is that what you mean? Well, for the office and whatever else you use for business. I mean, you might be going to, uh, you know, traveling across the country to attend a CE uh, course, or you might be going to the bank to make the deposits or you might be going to you know see equipment or whatnot or you might be going to promote your practice to get patients in all that is deductible that's a business expense okay and then um this uh, dr ezra he's following up that question about the w2 question earlier he's asking w2 versus uh the income you would take uh in the form of a distribution yes yes so that's what i explained uh, and th that's what i thought the question was yes Okay. Okay. So, uh, can you just uh, answer it one more time? So that sure. So, so, so the question. Let's let me add it all together. What is a reasonable income for a dentist to claim as W two income versus the income you would take in a distribution? Yes. So the reasonable income is say what a dentist in that area will be paid just for dentistry if they were an employee uh, doing that. Say four hundred dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whatever hours this doctor is working four hundred times that, if that is the rate in that area, that's all should be that should be on W two, then that's enough. We have a basis for it. It's reasonable to pay whatever what a, what a third party outside unrelated will be paid to do the same work. Okay. Okay. That is a good way to find a reasonable, and then you can make adjustments up or down for it, uh, you know, for different factors. Okay. Great. So Jay, let's keep going as far as like what we can actually run through our practice here. So we talked about, we talked about the car. Next thing I'm talking about meals. Let's talk about meals here. Um, is it, how aggressive can we be? Cause you know, a lot of times I'll take out my colleagues and whatnot. And, and we talk a little business. We talk some business sometime. Yesterday I met up with uh, Chris Hoppower at, at a bar and then we were talking business, you know? So, so how, Aggressive, can you be there as far as meals go? And what kind of documentation do we need to keep? Do we need to keep all the receipts or the, what are like the, the best practices for that? The best practice, which I normally suggest is that at a meal, when you are discussing before, during or after the meal business, uh, that meal is deductible. The way uh, I normally suggest is that when the bill comes, uh, uh, on the on the check on the on the back of it, you just write the name of the person with whom you know you had the meal, right? And short to a couple of lines what you discussed, right? And uh, then the front of the receipt will have the you know the date, the name of the restaurant, and all the details of the meal, and that that's good enough. Oh, okay. And then we should just uh, like just scan that in and keep it in a uh, Yeah, you can scan it. You can keep it. You know, I mean, if you are old fashioned, you can just put it in a box or in a or in a in an envelope and keep it at the end of the year. Mark that year on it and just put them away in case you need them for audit. Uh, you yeah, don't need to file them. Or, or for? I'm sorry. How long do you have to keep those receipts for? Well, I mean, you, they can audit you back three three years um, wow. for most expense um, your tax returns. So at least three. Um, some types of uh, uh, you should some type of you know documents you should keep forever. Uh, some you should keep for as long as you have that asset. If you bought an asset which you are using over multiple years, um, tell you the truth, I um. <clears throat> In my own personal practice, I basically, I think if I go in there, I have those boxes from, uh, don't take, they don't take much space. Uh, so actually in the, now they have boxes in the old days, I used to have those envelopes and I have slung them somewhere back in my store. I never needed the space, so I just kept them there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think I can go back and many, 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 I think a couple of decades even find stuff, <laughs> but you don't have to. Yeah, that is just, you know, you don't have to. So, so, so just to recap that guys, if you, uh, you know, you're doing some business meals, what's going to be required is you got to put the name of the other person that you're with, 
and what you guys discussed. And then you're good to go. Keep it in a box, scan it in, put it in your Dropbox. But just, uh, you know, Jay just said you want to keep it around for a few years, three years. He's kept it for decades. I don't know if we have to go that far. No, but you know that. That. Sorry. Uh, now, I know there's a lot. Actually, I have a few friends who uh, practice with their spouse, right? And, you know, I mean, sometimes we talk about business. The, would that fly with the IRS? Hey, I, I met with. I was having a meal with my spouse. She's, you know, the office manager. She's a dentist too, and we discussed this. Well, the operating thing here is reasonableness. It has to meet a reasonableness uh, uh, criteria. It, what they call smell test as well in vernacular. <laughs> uh, so it has. I mean, you can't have lunch every day with your with your spouse and say, you know, oh, we will discuss business. So we're going to pay for the lunch, and we have to discuss business at dinner. So we're going to pay out our dinner from that and make it deductible. That's not going to work, right? So, but occasionally, if you go out and make have a meeting especially for to discuss business and all that i mean you can you, you can buy a meal and you know that will be deductible yes okay so we have uh another w2 question this is from dr chris can you take more in distributions than your w2 salary or do you need to keep it the same no there, there is no requirement that uh, you need to keep it the same uh, again, the, the, the test to which they apply is reasonableness. So as long as you can prove uh, reasonableness of whatever you are taking, you are good. It could be that your distributions are higher than W-2 income or your W-2 income is higher than distributions. Um, can go either way. Um, there's no hard and fast rule on that. Okay. So we're going to keep going with the... Uh, what can we can run through our business? We talked about the car. We talked about meals. What are some other things that dentists could run through their business that they might not know about that's perfectly legal? Any other ideas? Yes. I mean, one thing which I um, get pushback uh, from dentists is when I suggest that, uh, you know, they can, they can use uh, many dentists work from home. Mm-hmm. OK, so they do like uh, some of them do all the management part of the, the, the business from home. Or they're, doing like, in, or they're doing Facebook live videos from home. Like you, you are doing right now. Yes. OK. Yes, exactly. Uh, so that um, so they spend the time and I would even suggest the, the dentist. There are some dentists who spend half their life on Facebook answering questions and making jokes and on, <laughs> on the Facebook in the dental groups. So they can actually claim it to be education. They're learning about dentistry. Well, so hey, Marty, if you are watching, yeah, Marty can actually. Marty, you're watching. You, Marty, actually could say that he is working from home. Yeah, Marty actually spends, I think, a lot of time on the Facebook, and uh, actually, Marty can claim it, I think, as a uh, as a public service as well because he entertains all of us. You know, that's right. That's right. So, so let's go back to that. So, you, so, so you're saying if if you do some work at home, maybe you're remote login doing some admin work from home, uh, you could say that you're you're working from a home office. Yes, so you so you can have a home office, and there are different ways to deduct that to make it. Uh, so there some are more efficient than the others, but it can be used at that. That is one one way it can be done. Wow, and then uh, so let's think about that. So like if you're talking about mileage driving to work, going to your office. So technically, if you're driving home, you're actually going to your other office. Wouldn't you say so? Well, what is happening is that if your home is the main office, you see, you have to have uh, it has to be the main office, the, the okay. way from where the practice is run. So if you do not do any administrative or management functions from your practice, instead, you do all of them from the home for any reason. For example, if you don't have enough space to do it or there are confidentiality issues, you don't want your staff to know what you're doing and all that. So if for that reason, do that, that, then you are basically have two offices. Okay. You're traveling between one office and the other office. And then because, because the, um, <clears throat> you see, commuting is not deductible. Uh, okay. But uh, traveling from one office to another is if you have to. That is just like having two practices. If you have two practices. Right, right, right. Can exactly. Basically, uh, you know, the, the, the traveling between the two is deductible. 
Okay, so that is deductible. So I um, I have a, a question here from another uh, doctor here. Uh, this doctor, so not so much admin work, but they do uh, like case planning. He uses the software to do case planning and designs. He does that mm -hmm. stuff from home before he goes to his practice. Would that qualify? Yes, as that will. Okay, wow. All right. And then we have another question here. Um, should we lease a car or buy a car for the business? Mm, well, it is a decision which uh, uh, generally, generally, if you are the type of person uh, who's cheap like me and buys a car and doesn't let it go until it dies, then you are better off buying it than leasing it. But if you are the kind of fancy young you know, up and coming dentist who wants to change their car every two, three years, then yeah. you're better off leasing it. Okay. Generally, generally I'm talking about. So, so really it just depends on their preference. Yes. Generally, if you keep the car for a longer period, you're better off buying. If you pay it for a shorter period, you're better off. These days also there are factories, car technology is changing very fast. So many people say leasing is better because we are all hoping that one day we will soon, we will have the self-driving cars. I'm looking forward to those. <laughs> so I have a question here. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is a question, just the way it's phrased, but commuting is not deductible except when your car is owned by the business. I'm assuming it's a question because there's a question mark there. Maybe it should have said, is commuting not deductible unless your car is owned by the business? So commuting, you said, is not deductible. No, commuting, commuting itself is not deductible. Right. So you can't deduct um, going from your home to your office and back. That is right. not deductible. But if you're going from one office to another, then it is deductible. Right. And so you might have an... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so you're, what you're saying is uh, if you're working from home part of the time, that is like going to your another office. You're going to your business office. Yes. Okay. So uh, hopefully that answered your question. Um, just just work from home, okay? And buy your car through your business and then you're good to go. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so Jay, I mean, so those are those are like three really big pearls there uh, that a lot of us are always wondering about. You know, that is the, uh, you know, the meals, right? We know how to c prevent ourselves getting in trouble. We're talking about the vehicle running through the business. And a big one that you just said just now is, well, if you're doing work at home, that's kind of like a home office. And then that way you can deduct that office to office from your home to your office. That's huge too. And then, oh yeah, another thing is, is that we were talking about using our kids and our marketing materials, photos for the website and whatnot. And you said, yeah, yeah, you can pay them their normal rate for uh, if they're a model. So yeah, that's great too. Uh, so anything else? Okay, let's talk about, so we talked about what you can do. Let's talk about things that we can't do. Now, you already kind of burst my bubble there. You said, yes, you can't take your spouse out. Even if you work with, you can't take her out and write that off to the business all the time. Okay. Maybe once in a while, all the time. Okay. I get that. What else? What are the things that we can't do that you see and you just say, Doc, that's crazy. You can't do that. What are the things that you can think of? Most of the time, I, look, I actually look at it from different point of view than you okay. and what you're saying. I, if you bring a situation to me, I try to find a way how we can make it deductible. Oh, I like that so style. That's a different different approach than trying to find, okay, how we can get business benefit from this and make it deductible rather than, you know, the, the other way around as you are explaining. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that style. Okay. So we got a question here. All right. It's kind of long here. I've read that renting your home to your office for staff meetings and retreats is tax deductible. I've done so for less than 14 days. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, that is true. Uh, if you that, that actually comes from there is an established uh, rule that if you rent uh, not only your home, even your second home to anybody for up to 14 days, then you don't have to report that income. Okay. Oh, so you don't have to report that income. You report that income. So which means that you can rent, yes, you can rent your own home or your second home for staff meetings, staff parties, trainings, whatnot, and pay yourself 
uh, for that. Yeah, it's actually some sometime it is vernacular. In vernacular, it is called Augusta rule. Mm -hmm. People who live near the golf course over there, they rent, <laughs> they rent their homes for less than fourteen days when they are those you know uh, all so the less than fourteen days there and they make so tons of money. So your practice can write a check to you because you just use your um, beach house as a retreat. Yes. yes. Okay. If, if there's a business reason for that, yes, which has been dressed off training and stuff like that. All right. So Dr. Chris has another question here. He's, he has another W2 question. How much more could you take in distribution than your W2 before it becomes a red flag for the IRS? Uh, there, there is no, as I said before, there is no set formula for that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, we have to look, I look at it from the other point of view. What is reasonable? Once it is reasonable beyond that, whatever I take as distribution is perfectly fine. Once I have taken the reasonable amount in salary. Okay. In my practice, for example, my wife and I both work in this practice. Uh, and we take reasonable salaries and then, you know, what, for, say, for example, a guy like me, a fat, bald Indian speaking with strange accent accountant, how much will I be paid if I was working for somebody else? Okay. So I, I look at it that way. So that much I take in W2 salary from my practice and remaining all the money which you guys give me, uh, I just take home as distributions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So we got Dr. Bassett straight from Colorado. Um, she's got a question here. So if your business writes a check to you for any of your beach house and it's less than 14 days, then that is untaxed. I can come to you from a real business. Okay. Sorry. I, okay. So I think what she's asking here is, um, if it's less than 14 days, you're using your beach house. Um, is that, is that untaxed income? Yeah, again, interestingly, so that is the basic uh, rule. Uh, hopefully, I didn't butcher your question there, but I think that's what you're asking. Okay, yeah, um, that is the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, she's right. Uh, if, say, I'm, I'm, like, like, let me give you an example. Say you hold four quarterly meetings. Every quarter you meet with your staff, right? Mm -hmm. You hold it at that beach house. So, yes, that is, um, you know, deductible. Four meetings, like, for a year. Then you have trainings in between. Okay. So you get a consultant and he comes in and trains. Okay. One day at every month or whatever. So as long as that is less than four, that is up to 14 days. And then we are good. Uh, then you can do. And as long as that is a reasonable, I mean, it can't be that you can, you know, you start writing a check for yourself for $10,000 a day. Uh, that will, Again, it has to pass the reasonableness. Test. I mean, would you say reasonable being like what the going rate is for the rental homes around yeah, there? For example, if I if it's a beach house and, you know, we can rent a beach house next door for, say, I don't know, seven, eight hundred dollars a day. So, I mean, that is what is the going rate. You can't pay yourself ten thousand dollars for that day. <laughs> you know, it will be a problem. Right. OK, so I guess the, the best practice would be like if you're going to rent out your beach house to yourself, you would just check like what the other rentals are going around that area. Right. You can prove that. Yes. You could say, hey, this guy down the street is renting it out for 500 bucks or 800 bucks. Okay. Good question there. Man, I'm definitely going to take advantage of that. Jay, how long have you been working with uh, with Dennis? How long have you well, been my practice in this, this shape has been around since 2006. But I have been working in the same space, small business, finance, accounting, for since I was 19. Wow. Oh, okay. And so I'm you're... 54 now. So it's been a lot of years. It's been a lot of years. Yeah. Okay. So, so when I started, I had hair. They were all black and they were like, my head was full of them. And then you started working with Dennis and then you started losing your hair, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold on. Uh, we have another question here. So, so Dr. Hui just asked, I thought the new tax law disallows business meals except for staff. No, it does not. I think the doctor is thinking about entertainment. So there are two different things. It used to be meals and entertainment. There used to be one entertainment part they took away. Meals are still allowed. There is some confusion in the, in the marketplace about it, but in reality, meals are allowed. Okay. And then we have a 
tongue in cheek question here, but I'll just go ahead and put it up. Are dental specific accountants more expensive? Depends. Some accountants, some accountants who are not dental specific are more expensive. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the generally, uh, generally you get what you pay for. That's also true. That's like anything else in life. There but you go. Not, not, not more expensive. No. All right. So, uh, so Dr. Sheehan has a question here. Um, hold on. Let me just, there we go. Does the new tax cut apply to us? I've heard we are excluded because we are professionals. Yeah, up to, uh, well, even professionals, it applies to them. Actually, I did, God knows. So, I don't know, I did finish about 10 returns today. And out of them, I guess half of the, them got some uh, QBI deduction, it is called. Uh, because their income was lower, the dentist, they, their income was lower than the limit. So there's an income limit as well. If you go beyond $450,000, uh, $450, then that is, uh, then, you know, you don't, uh, and then uh, then you can't take advantage of the QBI, which is 20% of the net income, uh, business income, which, 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 you, which you get a deduction for. So, but if your income is below that, uh, combined income for the family, then yeah, you are. Then you take the reduction. It does not exclude you because you are professionals. Okay. Uh, it it's doesn't limit income, you. It's income. It limits you. It, income is this is is the income criteria. Is the criteria. Yeah, yes. Like professional. Okay. Can our business pay our student loans? No, business uh, student loans are personal, and so you have to pay them. A business can pay it. It's just that you can't take a deduction for that. You can write a check from business, thus you will not get a deduction. Uh, okay. And there is an income. If your income, most dentists' incomes are higher, so they don't get, unfortunately, they don't get to deduct the interest on the loans which they pay. So we have uh, Dr. Melissa here. I'm going to put her question on here. There are no dental CPAs in my state. What do you think of remotely using a CPA? Well, you know, I'm glad you answered that because. Jay is an EA and he work, can work everywhere. So um, I will hold that because I'm gonna goad him into giving us a nifty deal. So hold on to that question there. Uh, we have another question here. What are your thoughts on a cash balance plan for our younger dentists? Well, cash balance plans are good. Uh, <clears throat> they uh, depends on your income and your goals. Okay. Again, this is why it's important to have a plan for your life first know when you need how much money you need at what time in your life and then you plan accordingly and if the cash balance plan gets you there yes you should have it it's a good way because you get deduction up front and then your money grows uh, you know tax deferred uh, so it is it is a good strategy like all but like all good strategies you need to make it uh, make it specific to you see how it fits into your overall life financial plan that's why it is so important to have uh, don't make these decisions haphazardly but have an actual integrated plan which includes an integrated tax reduction strategy okay and that uh, th that's the best way to go around uh, but cash balance plans are yes they form a very important part uh, of a of a dentist's uh, way to get to get financial freedom. I love it. I love it. Thank you for that answer there. Okay, so we have a another question here. So can we get a credit line to pay student loans and then deduct it through the business? Uh, no. You got you got to admit that was kind of creative. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. A creative actually, way, but the, I gotta give you props, man. That was yeah. pretty creative. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but they, they, they had they had caught caught got onto it before you. <laughs> all right. All right. Jay, you know what? You know what group we're in here? Mm -hmm. You're in a nifty thrifty dentist group here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what that means, you know, we have a, we have a doc here who's talking about, she needs a, a CPA. So one that she didn't have a dental CPA in her, her state. And so look, she's, she's probably wondering, we need a nifty deal. So Jay, we need a nifty deal. So what can you do for the nifty thrifty dentist Facebook group? Cause we're all about deals here. How can you help us out, Jay? Sure, sure. What can so, you do? Glenn, I just want to make sure I understand. English is my second language. Okay. So does nifty mean cheap as well as the same thing? What is the difference? So, so nifty is, means skillful. Okay. And thrifty, I wouldn't say cheap. I would say just careful with your money. Okay. 
So skillful. So you would be nifty thrifty would be very skillful in saving money. Okay. Okay. So I I don't I don't know why I always use the word cheap for you guys, but you know, again, it's my my limited English ability. Um, uh, I can blame it on that. Uh, anyway, coming back to that, yeah. What I what I can do for you, uh, actually, not only cheap, I'll I'll give it to you for free. Here is what it is. I can uh, do an analysis of your tax returns. Any one of from your group can send it over to me. If you send me your tax returns from previous year, whatever year it is, like 2017, 2018, you send it over to me or my office here, and somebody will get back to you and they will schedule a meeting with me. And then we have two meetings for that. In first meeting, I ask you questions, try to understand the story behind the numbers. Then I go back, do my work. I analyze that tax return. In the second meeting, I come back and I share with you what I found. Uh, what was what is good about your tax return and what is not good, what you can change. And I'll do that for free. And, and will you find out where there was a missed opportunity where we could have saved money? Yes. Could we go back and retroactively get that money back? Yes. Three, yes. three years you can. They let you go back three years and amend the return so you can get the money back if there is that, um, but not more than three years. If so, you so owe you to the government, the government can come after you anytime. But if they owe you, you can only go back three years. Well, that's not fair. Okay, so what you're saying, okay, so what you're saying here, Jay, this is what you're saying. You're saying, okay, for the Nifty Thrifty Dentist Group, you would actually look at your previous year or the second year or whatever, whatever year you want tax return, preferably within the last three years. And the latest one is better. The best okay, is the latest one. The latest one is best. You'll look at it. You'll talk about what you saw. And you also bring up the fact that, hey, you could have saved some money here too. And if they decide to sign up with you, they can benefit. They can automatically get some money back right away. Okay, normally, okay, first of all, that sounds like a lot of work. Normally, how much do you charge people to do that kind of analysis? Um, well, it is actually two hours of my work in the meeting, plus I do about an hour in the back. So it takes about three hours of my work. Then my staff has to put some time into it and bring that there. The value for that is about $5,000. So $5,000 value for free. I love that. I love that. And, and any obligation, like, okay, if you do it, that means they got to sign up with you? Or can they say, hey, Jay, thank you so much, uncle, thank you, high five, and they're out of there? Absolutely, yeah. The, really? There's no obligation on your part to spend any money with me, no. I love it. Guys, all right, that's the nifty thrifty deal. Guys, if you like, Jay's no nonsense, guys. That's why I said, Jay, you remind me of my organic chemistry professor. No nonsense, just straight up facts, straight to the point. Um, if you guys like his style, you know what? It doesn't hurt. Send your tax returns over there. He'll analyze it. He'll say, hey, your CPA has been a scrub and maybe you need to come work with me, but there's no obligation. And if there's some opportunity there, you sign up with them. I mean, actually, you told me a story. What is the you said you work with someone in another mastermind and you found that he had like it was like an enormous, ridiculous sum of money. What was that? Let everyone know. You remember that talk you had with me? Yes. Yeah. We. Uh, well, I have the, the, the lot of I have a lot of stories about that. Um, people. Well, think uh, of that story. You were at that meeting and you did this analysis, and he had how much money that he had left on the table. I I don't know which one I told you, but I have had many uh, 30, 40, 60, 80 thousand dollar ones. Yeah. How much? My highest was my highest was, if I remember correctly, oh, uh, then it's okay. Hundred and twenty something thousand dollars. One of them. Twenty thousand dollars. One hundred twenty. But it was a big practice. Yeah, one hundred twenty. It was a big practice, and they had they really screwed it up. But uh, <laughs> uh, the others, yeah, I, I, 20, 30, 40. Uh, for an average, uh, I can tell you this much that for about a million dollars practice, I normally. I do find sometimes twenty thousand dollars plus in overpaid taxes. Wow! So, so actually, if if you're one of those doctors, man, you're basically getting Jay to work for you for free. Basically, if you get all that money back, I mean, that's that's beyond nifty thrifty. Okay, Jay, we got any time for a few more questions? I know, I know, I, I, I'm I'm waiting any second now for your wife to just bust in and start yelling at me for taking you away for so long. So let's do these real quick. Um, let me put these questions and then we'll talk about the nifty deal again. Okay. Uh, this, this is a pretty good question. 
Um, how can you write off charity work done at a clinic? So I'm assuming not done at their practice, but done at a, a different site. Okay, if you go um, to a different site and do charity work, you can of course deduct the all your expenses of going there, coming back, okay? all the supplies you use. That you can you can deduct it as a charity, or and uh, whatever other expenses you reasonable expenses to do that work, you can deduct it on your personal tax return. Mm -hmm. um, if you do it in your own practice. Uh, then you can uh, basically you still because you you have deducted everything all the expenses of the practice anyway so that 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 is being deducted uh, and uh, so that that's it okay wow all right so we got another question here can you claim startup business expenses prior to opening or do they roll into the year that it opens uh, most of the uh, most of the practice startup. Uh, expenses can be uh, deducted. Uh, there are different uh, practice when the startup actually expenses are of different kinds, uh, but yeah, they are they're all deductible. You can deduct them uh, uh, pr even prior to opening some of them. Okay. And one of once you open it, it's then it's open. Then you can deduct it. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Dr. Hui is asking a very important question. I actually was thinking about this myself. Is there a limit on the car lease payment? Because, you know, uh, 911 GTs, the lease payment's pretty high. Yes. Um, but, but you know, you need that car to get to, to, to work really fast. Yeah. So. Reasonableness. Again, reasonableness. Mm. If you can prove it reasonable, then that's what it is. Okay. There's no limit. There's no official limit on it. Okay. Okay. So there's, so technically, I mean, I mean, as long as you're taking it to work, right? And yeah, as long as it can work, as long as it's reasonable, I mean, Again, there has to be some some level of reasonableness. Okay. You can't so, be or, or nine eleven? No. <laughs> no. Depends. No. Maybe you can just. I don't know. Maybe slap a magnet on there that has your practice <laughs> name. Maybe that magnet is deductible. Totally oh. deductible. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we got another question here. What are the most commonly missed write-offs that dentists make? Well, we have been talking about it today. Um, all these things we talked about. About the, the drive. The, the, the kids, the, the office, the, the, office, the community. That's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Um, all, all these things which we have been talking about, these are the ones which I see missed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. Jay, all right. Let's do this one more time. Uh, guys, if you liked what uh, Jay's questions, you like his style, you want to you wanna see what he's all about, he just offered a super nifty deal. The nifty deal is, is he's going to look at your previous year's tax returns and he's going to analyze it and he's going to tell you all the opportunities that you have because maybe you weren't working with the right tax professional or whatever, CPA or EA, and they missed some stuff and he's going to show you. And you know what? It's going to be free of charge and, you know, no requirement or anything. That's his give to the nifty thrifty group. So um, all you got to do is reach out to him. So Jay... Uh, how do they get a hold of you? Best way to get a hold of you? Go to your website, email you, message you on Facebook. How, what's the best way? Well, we I have a website called Less Tax for Dentists, which is right here on oh, which chart. Hey, if you can see, so we want to see that also Less right behind me. Guys, do you like that? Dentists for dentists. Um, but uh, you, if you want to send the tax return, you can email it to me at j j a y at J A Y M A L I K dot com, which is J at J Malik dot com. And what I'll do is um, I will put that in the in the comments section. And guys, you got to let them know that you want the nifty deal. OK, because if you just call him up and he's going to be just like, who are you, man? Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't know who you are. What about free deal? I don't give anything free out. You got to talk and say it's from the nifty thrifty group. And then that's going to jar his memory. So just ask him for the nifty thrifty deal. And what he'll do is he'll analyze your tax returns, right? doesn't hurt. You'll never, you don't know what you don't know, you know? So uh, I'm probably going to send it over for him too. And then if you see some opportunities, then, Hey, you know what the opportunities are. If you decide to work with them, that's cool. If not, at least, you know, so uh, that's a nifty thrifty deal. So, Jay, thank just you. all your patients, when you present a, a treatment plan to them, they want to go to a next dentist and get a second opinion on that. 
So you should get a second opinion on your on your finances. <laughs> oh man, I yeah. When people come in, they ask for a second opinion. I'm like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> Anyways, all right, Jay, thank you so much, and guys, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. <laughs>